Hello everybody, this is the LCD that I removed from a treadmill and I've been fiddling around making the the one sc the screen work. So I thought I'd share that with you just to for the information and we'll muck about with that in future. So looking at the back of the board this screen the, the, the smaller screen is now down this end. I'll move that across a bit. It's now down this end and is driven by this chip, which is an HT1622 chip. It used to be driven by a PIC chip, which was, modern, uh, which was set there, but I removed that so that signals from it wouldn't interfere with the signals I want to send by, from the Arduino. So a bit of judicious work with a multimeter confirmed from the data sheet that all this, the segment lines are connected to the LCD and all the COM lines are also connected to the COM to the to the LCD except for segment zero and segment one. So that makes this display 14 segments in every digit and it gives it 15 digits and the decimal point is part of the digit as it happens so therefore it's a 15 element or 15 segment display for each digit okay we'll get there anyway so having probed around a little bit I found that this chip and this chip here which drives the big display are are of the same family so they take the same code and the same instructions and all the rest of it they have a set of diodes back here that connect to the to the old microprocessor and the old microprocessor ran at 3.3 volts so those were used to um, limit the current or limit the voltage anyway that the the um, microprocessor would see when these are running at 5 volts okay so there's a chip select line which comes in here I've removed the the diode in this case but anyway that's the chip select line which you can easily find by re reviewing the data sheet on this chip and it's pin number one I think anyway it connects to this line and I brought that out and also found that the data right and I think that's the right order so that's chip select this gray wire is right and this white wire is chip select for this chip um, are, are well the first two are, are common between these two chips so write and data are common between the two chips and then the chip select is used to select which one I'm writing to and further work with the multimeter discovered that this pin here is connected somewhere I think it is to the these convert these uh, lines here that drives the LEDs backlighting so having done that I've rigged up an Arduino this is an Uno in, in this case and we have pins where are they here we go pin 11 is chip select for this chip pin 12 is right and the purple one is pin 13 those are arbitrary choices you can make them anyway I'll just plug this one in to keep it out of the way and not cause it short this gray wire is connected to plus 5 volt which drives the, the backlighting on and that of course is a common ground for the Arduino's USB as well so turning back to the front going back a bit for the sake of demonstration That's the backlighting that's come on, purely because I'm hard driving it through from the uh, 5 volt line. And there's the display. It's flickering a bit uh, on the camera, but it's not doing anything of that nature on in from what I can see. So there we go. It does work. Just need to go along and figure it out, and I'll talk about how we how we got there to put that on the screen shortly. Okay, let's talk about the controlling chip for a moment. 
the chip that's on that uh, circuit board is the HD1622 and it comes in a family of different uh, chips that can have that can drive a variety of different number of segments and what have you so the HD1622 can drive 32 by 8 segments which I think is 256 and then it tells you a bit about how the thing works and blah 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 this is vol this particular revision is revision 1.3 which has the QFP-A layout 64 pin chip which is actually the one that's mounted on the board so scrolling down a bit we have the various descriptions of the of the signals so chip select is an input and it talks about what you need to do and read and write of course are other inputs and outputs and what have you now fortunately because this thing is already mounted and we know it used to work we don't have to worry about the electrical specifications of these because it's already taken care of by the original board designer I will be putting a circuit diagram of this thing into the final documentation for it as well so that might be useful these are the electrical specifications timing and and what have you these are important so for example the chip select line must arrive T whatever that says microseconds or milliseconds or whatever it is before the first clock pulse on the reader write lines and similarly the uh, the data needs to occur uh, relative to the other pulses in the correct way as well so fortunately for the library that I, I downloaded from um, Marty MacGyver has that sorted out so I didn't need to worry about that either but in, in, in essence that's what you need to comply with to write to the chip okay now this bit here is the RAM mapping between the LCD segments as you can see here and the common lines that connect to these segments the addressing of the uh, address lines and the four data bits this diagram is completely doesn't doesn't help me at all I have no idea what this actually is supposed to mean so eventually I've given up on that following Marty's uh, good works and 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 the examples that he gave and I've developed a let me just move this out the way come on there we go I developed a separate little diagram that sort of describe, dis describes how, how the addressing works so if we instead of saying segment down the side here and we ignore the com lines altogether if we drive d0 for a particular digit like this one here then so that's one when all the others are zero then then digit one segment one will be illuminated and if we drive this one digit one segment two will be illuminated and then so on and so on and so on all the way across till 16. now digit one because there's no digit zero because it's a 15 digit display and segment zero and segment one are not connected so there's no there's no information that can be produced with that but this is the first digit and so writing a one there and all the others are zero gets you the first segment displayed second segment third fourth fifth sixth seventh eighth ninth tenth eleventh twelfth 13, 14, 15, and 16. Of course, 16 is is not connected because there's only 14. Sorry, there's only 15 digits or 15 segments on this particular LCD. Now, one more thing: if you wanted to drive two segments, then you would put a one, for example, here and a one here, which would then drive digit one. Um, uh, two of the segments on digit ones would be turned on and if you want to drive three then it's this one this one and that one and if you convert those hexamals the first one is of course one hexamal that would be one and one so that's two hexadecimal and then one 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 would be three hexadecimal uh, sorry that's not right <laughs> uh dear uh, we'll get it right eventually anyway so by driving the correct combinations here you can light up any particular 
segment on any one of the digits. So, having a look at the, the digit addressing, um, I've got this handy little table here, and the address for digit 4 starts at 000100, and that's simply a straightforward table of uh, I made here of all the addresses from 0 to 3F, which are six, uh, 256, I think, addresses. Um, and I've made a binary representation of those as we go along, so that's, that's easy enough. Um, and you'll notice that the, well, I don't know if you'll notice, but the address of the first address um, of digit 1 is 4. I then went along and using Marty's segments code worked out that on if we assign A, B, C, D, E and F and what have you to the 14 letters on the display on the LCD then when I drive with hex 1 then element K will illuminate, that's that one. And if you drive with hex 2 nothing happens. If you drive with hex 4 then you get B R and so on, and I've just got this in tabular format all the way across for all the letters. So decimal point is next to decimal 80, and so on and so on and so on, all the way. And then these numbers represent the actual the data bits. And then I try to take those data bits and put them into a vertical column here to show how that data relates to. Let me get rid of this pretty quickly. So you know, if we took that and we split it up, as that's the first bit that gets written to address four. Sorry, the first nibble that gets addressed gets um, written to this address. That's the second one. That's the third one, and then of course that's the fourth one. Um, and that'll give you element K to be illuminated. Right. So once you have all of that done with reference to this, um, I suppose, image. You can develop your font. And so I got hold of this 14 segment proposed font from D. Madison on, on GitHub as well, describing the, the 14 segment characters, because it drives 14 segments plus one decimal for the decimal point. That's a decimal point is part of the cell CD digit. Then composed that character 0, which is A, B, C, D, E, and F. Now to differentiate 0 from O and Q, it's got a stripe through the middle, so therefore we've got P and K as well. So all of those together, when you use that, that table on the, on the previous slide, adding them all up, you end up with a hex value of EA45. And the same for all the other digits. Now I've only bothered with 1 to 9, or 0 to 9, and A to Z, and a couple of graphics, because I didn't really have a need for anything for the lowercase letters. And they looked terrible, so I didn't like them. And some of the, yes, uh, some of the punctuation marks are also pretty crummy, so I didn't bother with them either. So I'll make this spreadsheet available for people to use as well. Just hopefully that helps to understand things. And for completeness, I copied out of the um, manual the command summary and the LCD timing summary. What's important to note here is that the data is clocked into the chip at every right, the rising right pulse. So you could argue that that's a clock pulse. But it, you know, for the sake of the exercise, it's called right. So in this case, because data is at a high, that becomes a one. Data at this clock pulse, data is a zero, so that's a zero and one, and so on and so on and so on. And that, what's important to note here from the code I'm going to be talking about later, is that you can write once the address once. So that's the digit address, and after that, you just simply write all the data and that you can write 16 or more if you want to go to the next digit as well. Um, 
you can just simply write all the data one after the other and fill the whole memory in the in the 1622 chip and um, display the digits that way. Something to note for what it's worth is the command for a write is a 101 and the command for a command is a 100. So you see that here, write mode, there's the command for a write and we're going to write the address to the memory of the of the chip and in this case we're going to send it a command 100 commands you will need for for example turning the LCD on and off which is 100 and then you've got these these characters that you've got to send it really is quite um, useful to go along and the first thing you do is write the default values back into the chip it's not exactly a big loss of time so that works nicely. Okay, so hopefully that was useful. Let's move on to the next stage. Okay, so Mighty MacGyver has been kind enough to produce us some driver code for this chip. And if you downloaded the usual process and what have you, this is the display he's used. That's obviously different to the one that I've got. Anyway, so if you download this code and open it up, I've had to modify it slightly for my for my application, but anyway, it's um, it's in running in an Uno, so some minor changes that I've got to do. I've got to fix these still. Something. This is the the I replaced Marty's um, uh, font code with mine because my addresses of the di digits are different to his addresses and um, the segment addresses are different as well so I ended up with putting my, my code in there for the fonts and so we get send bits and send bits actually writes the the right timing of the various bits and pieces into the chip and write data compiles it into the correct order to then send to the chip to write a command it's just a matter of using that and the commands have been defined up here and just to keep it very simple I did a straightforward manual conversion of, of a of the, of the message that I want to put on the screen and put the various um, characters in sequentially into the various digits those are the addresses of the first 15 no, no, actually 12 or so digits and then put it on the screen okay just to close out this discussion. I've connected a logic analyzer to the chip select write and data lines of this um, of the UNO. So I can have a look at what the logic timing was. And as you can see the chip select line drops, then the the data is set and then the write line clocks the data into the um, as HD 1622 RAM for the display. So thank you for your time and trouble to watch this and hopefully it was useful. Thank you. Cheers.